Charles Morris was born 80 years ago today in Augusta, Georgia. The second son of Florence and William Morris, he entered into a world clawing its way back from the Great Depression and facing the possibility of a second world war due to the rise of Hitler's Nazi party. Despite an ominous horizon, the Morris home was engaging and entertaining as both his parents were civically active and community-minded. Hunting and fishing with his father and friends created a lifelong passion for the outdoors and a love for conservation. Charles had passed this passion on to his children and grandchildren. I grew up with, with a father that was an incredible outdoorsman who loved nature, who loved hunting and fishing, and uh, he was a conservationist in many ways. For Charles, the media business runs deep as his father first managed the Augusta Chronicle and later became the owner. Made him the manager and then later the publisher and then later he ended up buying the Augusta Chronicle and became a great newspaper man. And so I grew up in that environment. With his father as publisher of the South's oldest continuously published paper and serving in the state Senate, the family had a lively home that was full of purpose and interesting personality. Charles had two siblings, Billy, his older brother, and Alden, his younger sister. At an early age, Charles caught the entrepreneurial bug, which he addressed initially by raising chickens and selling them and their eggs to neighbors. They had a little wagon, and they would dress me up in a Santa Claus suit and take the wagon to William Robinson Carnival. And they, I think they would charge a nickel or something for, for anybody wanting to ride in the little wagon pulled by the goat. <laughs> Later, he had a newspaper route, throwing papers in the pre-dawn hours prior to attending school. We would tie a string around his toe and put it out the window where somebody that worked for the Morrises would come by about 4.30 in the morning and jerk the string and wake him up so he would know to get up to go throw his newspapers. While at Presbyterian College, he played on the golf team and developed a lifelong passion for the game. Charles is one of the few people that has had two double eagles, which is scoring a two on a par five. He accomplished both of them at Augusta National, one on hole 15 and the other on hole eight. Being longtime chairman of the scoring committee at Augusta National is just one way Charles continues to give back to the game that has brought him so much pleasure over the years. Later, while at the University of Georgia, Charles married Ruthie Roberts of Augusta. Charles joined the Air Force Reserves and was shipped off to Lubbock, Texas for basic training. Following basic training, the two moved to Savannah to their first apartment at Trustees Garden. Later, they moved to Oklahoma City, where Charles worked for E.K. Gaylord at the Daily Oklahoma. After about a year, they moved to St. Petersburg, Florida, where he worked at the St. Petersburg Times before moving back to Savannah, where he rose through the ranks of the Savannah Morning News to become its publisher. While in Savannah, Ruthie and Charles had three daughters, Ruth, Tilda, and Mary. The late 1960s ushered in new challenges for Charles as he found himself building anew both in his career and family life. Forging ahead with his own business with his mother and sister as partners, Charles founded Morris Newspaper Corporation with the acquisition of the Murfreesboro Daily News Journal and later the Key West Citizen. And this was the beginning of the Morris Newspaper Corporation. To say I wasn't scared and that we weren't afraid after leaving a good job at Savannah News Press was, uh, would be an understatement. From this foundation, he grew Morris Multimedia with broadcast television, newspapers, magazines, digital, technology, outdoor advertising, and real estate holdings. Today, the company does business in eight states and the Caribbean, reaching over 25 million people per year. While founding his company, Charles met Rosalie Stone of Greenville, South Carolina, and the two had their first date on a golf course at Hilton Head. They were married in 1971 and began working on a new home and life together in Savannah. In the following years, Charles had his first son, Charles Hill, and later his fourth daughter, Rosalie. Throughout the next couple of decades, Charles and his family immersed themselves in the Savannah community, 
while his business continued to develop and grow. He underwrote the publishing of an historical book about Savannah. Recently, he was in a bookstore in Savannah, and he just happened to see a copy of that book, which is still being sold and still being published. So Historic Savannah has an annuity, thanks to Charles Morris. Charles naturally gravitated to leadership positions, both professionally and at home, serving on the board of St. Joseph Hospital, the Savannah Port Authority, the 200 Club of the Coastal Empire, the Associated Press, the American Press Institute, and the International Press Institute, just to name a few. In 1980, the company moved beyond its traditional newspaper foundation with the addition of broadcast television when Charles acquired WMGT-TV in Macon, Georgia. Today, there are 11 broadcast stations under the Morris Multimedia umbrella. Never content to bask in recognition for what he has done, Charles is forever passionate about the things that yet can be done to make his community and his industry better. Something I could do to give back to this incredible city of Savannah, Georgia that has been wonderful to me and my family. I live down at the, in the Three Gables building as a rookie reporter for the Savannah Morning News at the ripe old age of about 22. That's where I got to know Trustees Gardens. And for me to end up owning all that at this point in my life and being able to give back by developing it into a place for people and citizens and others and visitors to enjoy for events has brought a lot of joy into my life. Just last year, he was awarded the Frank W. Mayborn Award given each year to a media industry leader who has shown exceptional vision and leadership. To have been able to do what I've done all these years. I couldn't have done it without my family. I'm so proud of them and I'm so appreciative. Thank you all for this honor and it's a privilege to be with you. Thank you. On his 80th birthday, we honestly say we look forward to the future because we know there is more to come.